Hey WebWorld, Scotty D for Interface, and we are going to do a wiring extension job today against this Jensen receiver. This Jensen receiver is a two-zoned audio receiver, which allows speakers to be in two different sections of the camper that it's installed in right now. Zone A is currently wired up for the inside of the camper. Zone B is not wired up for anything. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to wire up Zone B to an outside plug that doesn't currently exist so that we can either select music inside of the camper, outside of the camper, or both inside and outside of the camper at the same time. Let's tackle it. All right, the first thing we need to do to start this project is to remove the receiver from its mount point inside of the camper. To do this, we have to remove these four set screws from the receiver. Now these are not standard screws, these are the square high torque screws, so you need to have a special bit to get this out if you have the same type of a receiver inside of your camper. Now we have all four set screws loosened up from the receiver, now it's time to remove the receiver from its mount point. Now one thing to be careful with on campers is there are a lot of things are hardwired. This receiver happens to be hardwired as well. Now along with where this receiver is mounted, there are also electricals for lights and switches. So you want to make sure that you be careful when you pull out anything that's mounted inside of a camper as not to disturb any other wiring that might be running through that same area. So let's be careful and let's remove this receiver right now and take a look at what's behind it. As you can see, it's a hardwired receiver, and as promised, there are other wires that go to different variations and configurations for electrical and audio in the same area. Let's be careful pulling this out and lay it on the counter. Since this is a hardwired receiver, you want to make sure that you very carefully study the wiring diagram that comes along with this receiver. This receiver's wiring diagram happens to be right here on the top of the receiver. Your receiver may be a little bit different, but make sure you follow the wiring diagram very carefully, as I said, not to disturb any other wiring that goes along inside of the camper, be it electrical or audio. Now we've studied the wiring diagram and we've identified the left and the right wiring for this particular receiver. We've marked them and set them aside. We'll come back to this wiring later. Right now we're going to prepare the jack on the outside of the trailer. What we're going to have to do there is we're actually going to have to drill and cut into the side wall of the trailer. To do this, first make sure you have identified all wiring for the trailer and make sure you do not disturb any wiring or cut into any wiring. Next, you're going to have to get a mount block this is a low voltage mount block that you can get from any hardware store. Now I've shimmed it up with this little white shim block to allow me to be exact where I have this block so I can mark it. There are four marking holes on side of this mount block. Go ahead and mark those with a pencil or a permanent marker and then use a T-square or a square to actually mark the entire area and then cut it out. Now that you've got the area measured and marked, go ahead and cut the hole very carefully, either with a utility knife or a, an X-Acto knife or a Dremel tool is the best, and that's what I'm going to be using today. All right, now that we have the inner panel removed, we also have had to remove the inside insulation between the inner wall and the outer wall. Note that we still have not cut through the outer wall, and the reason why we started our cut on the inside is you never know what you're going to find when you start opening up the walls. In my case, I actually discovered a stabilizing rib for the actual body of the camper, so I had to move my cut up a half an inch more to accommodate the mount plate. Now I can cut through the outer wall and install the mount plate. Now what we've done now is we've drilled four pilot holes from the inside of the camper to the outside of the camper. Now we're going to go to the outside of the camper, square off these holes by marking it with a T-square or an L-square, and then we'll go ahead and cut the outside of the skin off of the camper 
All right, now we're on the outside of the trailer, and here are the four pilot holes that I drilled from the inside of the trailer. Now I can easily tee off and mark this area so that I can cut it out carefully, not damaging any other part of the outside skin of the camper. All right, we've successfully removed the outer skin of the camper, exposing the inner wall and the outer wall. Now we need to dry fit our secure mount to make sure that it fits good. All right, a dry fit of the secure mount shows that we've successfully got the hole the right size. It does not wiggle at all. Now we need to make sure that there's enough re insulation removed to allow these set brackets to grab on to the skin, permanently securing this mount bracket to the camper. To secure the set bracket, all you need to do is place a standard Phillips head screwdriver into this screw hole, turning it clockwise, it will start to set that screw and pull that bracket to where it grabs the inner wall of the outside skin. As you can see from the inside of the wall that these mount brackets are now secured to the inner skin of the outside wall, permanently mounting that orange mount bracket to the trailer. Now we're going to prepare the outlet to mount to the mount point that we just installed to the outside of the camper. This is a three-part jack. It first consists of the RCA jacks that are the Leviton multi-use RCA jacks. We have a Tamac 16-in-1 configuration multi-application weatherproof receptacle cover. And we have a Leviton quick port, four-port duplex insert. You'll see we actually have two of the Leviton RCA jack kits. They come with one pair in each kit, a black and a red. The Tamac 16-in-1 configuration multi-application weatherproof receptacle cover. We'll pull that off and you'll notice the mount point for the Leviton quick port, four port duplex insert. I've actually had to modify this insert using my Dremel tool to expand the width of this outlet port to accept the Leviton quick port four port duplex insert so that it mounts flush inside of the mount point for the Tamac configuration multi proof application weatherproof receptacle. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take all four of these RCA jack inputs, and you can see that they're quick mount points, they snap in to the four port duplex insert and snap in place. Now, to add an extra level of comfort, we're actually going to super glue these into the four port duplex insert to make sure that they don't fall out because trailers move around, they have a lot of shaking, and I want to make sure that these do not move over time. So these will all be super glued into the four port duplex insert right here. To mount the Leviton RCA jack into the four port duplex insert, you need to actually be paying attention to the top of this. You'll see it actually says up kind of hard to show in the camera and you'll also see on the jack itself up so what you do is you take it almost like putting on a ski boot you take snapping it into the bottom and then sliding it into the top and it's kind of hard to do this by one hand and it snaps right into place all right we have all four RCA jacks installed into the four port duplex insert from Leviton this is the back and this is the front and you see all they are is a coupler which makes the back of it very useful to plug into just about anything you want and the front is a multi-use input as well now again the way that this will be installed will be ports one and two will be an output to a speaker left and right ports three and four will be an input from whatever type of input device you'd like to use like an ipod an iTouch, an iphone a multimedia mp3 player whatever you like you'll be able to actually input that device from the outside of the camper through th ports three and four now we're to go to the outside of the camper and mount the four port duplex insert with the two pair of rca jacks installed into the duplex insert we're going to be mounting it together to the outside of the trailer into the mount point that we installed earlier in this video. All right, we now have the four port jack mounted into the weatherproof enclosure to the outside of the trailer. Now we're gonna silicone everything up so it's nice and weatherproof. 
Now that we've got everything siliconed up so it's nice and weatherproof, we're going to move on to the wiring job between the amplifier and these RCA jacks. To do this, we're going to be venturing back to these pairs of wires that we separated earlier. One is a left, one is a right for the zone B. There's four wires because there's a negative and a positive for each wire. All right, we have the left speaker wire all wired up with wire nuts and electrical taped nice and tight so everything's nice and secure. Now we're going to move over to the right speaker for zone B, positive and negatives, and wire it up to the core and the shield of my RCA cable. All right, now we've got the core wired up or the post of an RCA cable. Now we're going to wire up the negative which is this wire going to this color-coded wire, which is the ring part of an RCA cable. All right, everything is nice and tidied up with the wire nuts, and I've used electrical tape to secure everything so that everything is nice and permanent, so nothing gets jarred from vibration. The next thing we need to do is take the other end of this cable and plug it in to the back of the RCA jacks of the mount that we just installed to the outside of the camper. All right, so you see we have the two RCA cables plugged into the jack that we mounted on the outside of the camper. And remember, the reason why we have two is one is going to be an output and one is going to be an input. Right here you see the input auxiliary on the amplifier that we'll use to plug in an external MP3 player from the outside of the camper through that jack into the amp and back out that speaker that's mounted on the outside of the camper. All that's left now to do is to place the amplifier receiver back into its mount point inside of the camper, torque up those four square torque screws so it's nice and secure and in place and we're all done. There you have it, a very nice, clean, professional, weatherproofed way to extend your audio experience from the inside of your trailer camper to the outside of your trailer camper and this project was very inexpensive, only around $45 US and just a few hours to complete and I gotta tell you, it was a very fun project to work on. If you like this video and you're watching it on YouTube, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you've got an idea for a tips, tricks, how-to, product review, blog entry, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line at live at scottydonline.com, live at scottydonline.com. We are open for content contributors and we can give you all the information that you need to get your video or blog entry right here on Interface Webcast. Keep it locked in Interface Webcast each and every Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, 12 o'clock GMT. Don't forget about the blog. Don't forget about Twitter. Don't forget about our Facebook page. And, of course, the gear store and more. I'm Scotty D. Take care, Web World.